Beloved, my name is Shumani. Today I would like to share with you the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to prepare yourself to hear from God and not from me, because I'm just a vessel. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you are a God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. You do not change. As we start with your word, please give us the wisdom to be able to uh, interpret your word in such a way that your children will be able to hear it and understand and live with it. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. You are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The theme of uh, this month is the power within you and the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm only going to touch on the power of the Holy Spirit. We all know that the for one to repent, you are called or you are drawn near to God through the power of the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which has been there. I'm going to read in the book of Acts uh, number 1, verse number 8. And there will be some other scriptures that I will only quote, but I will not going to read them all. The scripture which I'm reading, verse number 8, it says, But you shall receive power. What is power? It is the ability, the efficiency, the might. Meaning, when the Spirit of God comes to you, if you were a weak Christian, that will change. If you were you 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 had you could not do anything in the in the in the works of God, that will change. There are a few things that I've noted down that I just want us to go through them. Number one. The Holy Spirit shows power, but it also brings non-Christians to new life. You know, we have had so many people, pastors and uh, preachers of the word of God, who will say, I've made so-and-so repent. I've made so-and-so repent. It is not our might. It is the power of the Holy Spirit to bring someone and non-Christians to be a Christian. We can't do anything but only to preach the word. And the Holy Spirit comes and changes people's lives. We don't change people's lives. We live by the word of God and we act like that and people see the works. But the Holy Spirit changes people's lives. It brings people to you, to God, not to any other person. You have heard people say, well, these are my, this is my church. These are my people. No way. This is the church of God. We are Christians. We are called by God. We are called by his name. We don't belong to any other person. So the power of the Holy Spirit brings people to Christ, not us. We can preach until the day goes down, but only the power of the Holy Spirit brings these people to Christ, as it's recorded in the book of John 33. It is not our will, but it's the will of God. Number two. The Spirit of God gives you assurance and it also gives you boldness. It assures you that you are indeed a child of God. If you read in the book of Romans, it says the Holy Spirit confirms that you are indeed a child of God. It assures you. Once the Holy Spirit is in you, it will give you that certainty that you are a child of God. You don't need any other person to tell you. The Holy Spirit confirms it. It assures you. It talks to you. Remember, the Holy Spirit talks to us. If you have never experienced that, you must start praying. You must start meditating. And you must listen to the Holy Spirit. I always say the Holy Spirit speaks in a soft voice. You know, it speaks in a soft voice. Some, sometimes you may not hear. But you must open your ears, your spiritual ears, to be able to hear the Spirit of God confirming that you are indeed a child of God. You are indeed a child of the Most High God. It gives you boldness to be able to stand the test of time, to be able to even to, to talk to other people about the Word of God. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are filled with fear. You can't talk more. Sometimes you can even send other people to go and talk. You say, hey, I met so-and-so. 
can you please go and talk to that person? Because you are filled with fear. But if you open up to the Holy Spirit and you allow the Holy Spirit to fill your insight and you are assured and you are, you are filled with boldness, you are able to stand even before the people and testify the word of God. Number three, the Holy Spirit seals you as a Christian. It marks you. You have, you have a mark. That mark is invisible. It cannot be seen by us, but the devil is able to recognize it. You remember in the Old Testament when the, the Bible talks about when uh, God was sitting somewhere, the devil came and said, well, did you see that person? That's your friend, Job? Because there was a mark on that man. And he says, did you see him? Let, let me go to him. That mark, once you allow the Holy Spirit to come to you, you have it. You have it. You have got a mark from God. But that mark is given to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, brethren, that the Spirit of God is so powerful. It moves mountains. It moves every challenge. Once you have that Spirit in you, it gives you that. Now, when you've got that mark, you know. You can, you can feel it. People will ask you, you know, are you a pastor? Are you a Christian? Every time when you open your mouth, you start talking, they start asking you questions. Are you a Christian? Uh, are you a pastor? You must start to understand, oh, there's something which they are seeing which you are not seeing. Then you must start understanding how powerful the Holy Spirit is in you. Therefore, it gives you that boldness to testify that, ah, now that people have seen me, they are seeing what I am. I've, I've got the mark of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The next point. The Holy Spirit brings fruits. You know, uh, it's written in the book of Galatians. You know about those many fruits? It's, I think it's almost nine of them. Well, Christians, they may not know. Some of us, we don't even read the Bible. We don't read the Bible. And we don't even know the fruits of the Holy Spirit. There are so many. One of them is patience. I'm going only to talk to that. Patient. If you are not patient enough, you throw in the towel. Just in the house of God, if someone did not say, oh, you are wearing a better suit, you are you throw in the towel. If someone asks you, well, you have been praying, we don't see any change, you throw in the towel. Be patient in the house of God. The Spirit of God gives you, there's a purpose, there's a reason why you are given that spirit. There's a reason why you are, you, you are told to be patient. There's a reason. Some of us who are in marriage, when your, your partner is, you know, is angry, now you start breaking everything. Some of us as well, in the times that we are living on, the COVID-19 virus, some of us have just, we are not patient enough. Why is that shop not open? Why is this not being done? Be patient. Wait, God is in control. Be patient, God is in control. God will never allow anything to come to befall us without showing us the way. There's no test bigger than our strength. God knows that you can stand the test of time. Just be patient. You, you might be sitting there and think, well, I've been looking for work. I've been looking for, if we can start telling our testimony, you will be shocked. Some of us, we started working at the older age. Some of us, you know, at my time, when I was growing up, some of my classmates got married before me. And I looked and said, well, it looks nice. And I thought, well, let me go quickly. And the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 don't go quickly. Your time will come. And guess what? At this time, I'm 31 years in my marriage. And it feels good. Patience, peace up. Patience. So the Holy Spirit, when it gives you this so many, so many fruits, I just picked one. And one of them is love. And uh, you know, love is a commandment. You can't go away. You, you love with no condition. Once the Holy Spirit is in you, it gives you all these things, all these fruits. All these fruits comes to you. And as I said, I just chose, chose one. One only. 
And I know most of us, we are, it's very difficult to be patient. We, it's very difficult. We want shortcuts. You know, we want shortcuts. Whether you be buying a house, shortcut. Getting a job, shortcut. Some of us, we ended up, we end up even losing a lot of money buying jobs because we want everything shortcut. And then the next thing, that job is nowhere to be found. How many of our brothers and sisters around in our country who have lost so much money because they wanted a job? Someone said, no, come this side, give me 2,000, you will get a job, and they ended up not finding it. Be patient. And that is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Have it. Understand it. Accept it. Wait. And for those who wait for the Lord, you will be blessed. Keep waiting. Your time is coming. Hallelujah. The, the Holy Spirit empowers the church. You know, uh, I've been to many churches where they don't understand, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You know, they just, you know, say, well, we have heard about him. And I say, well, they are missing a lot. You are missing. As a church, you are missing. So the church should understand that it is being empowered by the Holy Spirit. One, empowered to join together in prayer, to love one another, to care for one another. When the church is empowered, you don't form small groups in the church like as it is in a political party. A church is not a politics. This is a spiritual thing. So when you are at a church, when the Holy Spirit empowers you, eh, it empowers you. All of us are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And it gives us different you know, activities in the church. No one has to be jealous of someone else. Eh? And it has given you so many gifts. You've got so much to do in the house of God. Stay in the house of God. Stay in the house of God and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because when you are empowered, you walk like a soldier of Christ. You keep, keep stay in the house of God. Stay in the house of God and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell into you, to be able to pray to one another, to pray for one another, to upgrade one another's situation. When you see a brother in the house of God, you know, running short of this, extend your hand. You are not losing because you have been empowered. The Spirit of God will give you means to help one another. The Holy Spirit will give you means to be able to guide one another. The Holy Spirit will give you a means to be able to stand as a church. And the church that respects the Holy Spirit will ever grow and grow and grow. You don't have to grow because you've, you've told people that they will become millionaires within a year. No. You don't grow the church because you, there's a prophet who speaks, you, you, you tells you your ID number and you are, no way. We're talking about the Holy Spirit that empowers you to do good, not to lie to the people. When you are in the church of God, when you feel the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit talks to the word of God. He will not come to, come to you and tell you other, that there is a nice, some, the one who's sleeping with you in a house is, is a snake. All of a sudden my wife has become a snake. All of a sudden your husband has become a snake. How come? Hallelujah. The Spirit of God comes into the church to empower the church. And I pray this morning that once this, it's like the church can understand and open up to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead them, to guide them. The Holy Spirit will never mislead you. It is so powerful. So powerful that, you know, sometimes when I'm walking, you know, on the things that I do, I feel like, I, there are times where I feel, this is the, I can, it's like the voice is talking to me. I hear the Spirit of God is, no, 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 don't go for this day. This is not, this will not work for you. And guess what? sometimes it's very difficult. And as I walk out, I'm thinking, oh, okay. And I feel free. And anything that creates doubt, once you are sitting next to someone and feel this doubt here, walk out. You are a child of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit empowers the church. It, is the, it edifies the church. It helps the church to interpret scriptures. It also helps the church to be able to discern whether whoever is standing before it is being truthful or not. And God, God help me, Christian must learn to discern the spirits. Oh, hallelujah. People must, the Christian must learn to discern the spirits. Don't all, don't believe every spirit. You know, I've learned every time when I sit in the church of God, I sit 
Well, I sit next to my wife. And once I hear something, you know, when I open my Bible and you, and there's someone who's speaking there and immediately when that person goes outside, I feel it in my spirit and immediately I close my Bible. And my wife will say, why are you closing the Bible? I will, say, I will tell you when you go out. The spirit of discernment, the, the Holy Spirit edifies the church, empowers the church to be able to do that. Then you will know in future, ah, something is not right here. Because the Spirit of God will have helped you. It's so powerful. It helps. It talks to you. It, it, it interprets to you. It tells you. That it, will, it will interpret a verse to you. You know, the, a few days ago, my daughter came to me and she said, I've got questions. Why did um, Esau and Jacob fought? Was it the will of God? Then I said, well, I have a, an answer. But I want you to first go and meditate because the whole, the word of God talks to your life. And she looked at me and said, oh, okay. I said, every word of God talks to your life. Every scripture talks to your life. It doesn't talk to any, it talks to your life. So when you read the scripture, read it as if God is talking to you before I give you answers. And she said, oh, good daddy, I'm answered. The Holy Spirit is so powerful. It gives you fruits. It gives you gifts. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus promised us. Because he promised us that the Holy Spirit will come when I'm born. He says, he will come and guide you. You know, there are Christians who don't want to be guided. Well, they don't want to be guided by the fellow Christians. They don't want to be guided by their pastors. They don't also want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. But Jesus Christ said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. He will. Because this is a person who must talk to you. He will guide you. He will teach you even how to walk with Christ. He will teach you even how to pray. He, he, is, he is a comforter. He will comfort you. That's what he said. He will comfort you. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that may the Holy Spirit empower you. May the Holy Spirit give you that sense of belonging that you must feel. I am the child of the Most High God. I am empowered. Walk upright. Walk. Walk like a soldier. March. Knowing that I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm not just a nobody. But I'm somebody in the eyes of God. I'm something in the house of God. Even in the church of God. You are very, you are at the right place. If you find yourself in the church, you are at the right place. If you have not been to the church, find one, which is a Bible, Bible founded church. Not just some Mickey Mouse churches, but a Bible, scriptural, Bible founded church. A church that believes in the Word of God. A church that believes in the Holy Spirit because they know without the Holy Spirit, they are nothing. They're just an empty tank. As I conclude this morning, I want to encourage you. As children of God, that don't walk like a blind person. Walk like, even if you can't see, but spiritually, you should be able to know to see the good thing that God has in store for you. God has so much in store for you. Just allow the Holy Spirit to stay in you, dwell in you, live in you, make the Holy Spirit feel home in your life, in your body, in your heart. In your soul. Make him be a living person in you. Listen to him. Communicate with him. Because he is so awesome. He is so good. He is so sweet. Some people say. He is so sweet. Hallelujah. He is so sweet. Once Jesus gives you this promise, you know. Because his name is greater than any other name. He's awesome. God is good. And as we, I conclude this morning, before I pray, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is not just here just to be mentioned in the, in the churches. He is here to work inside you, for you, and with us. In the house, in our personal lives, in our homes, everywhere we go. The Holy Spirit makes you to, to understand that doors will be open for me. Those doors which are closed, when you believe the Holy Spirit, will, oh, Holy Spirit, open this door for me. I can't open it for myself. Holy Spirit will open it for you. I pray this morning that as you ponder 
on this message. Allow the Holy Spirit to stay in you and to walk with you. Communicate with him. Understand his language. And he will respond so swiftly to you. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Amen.